remember Harry and I are in the car and he says, okay, well, my, my grandmother's there, so you're going to meet her. I go, oh, great. I love grand. I loved my grandmother. I used to take care of my grandma. This is great. He goes, right, do you know how to curtsy? So she had no idea what to expect and had to scramble to learn the perfect curtsy at the last minute. Did you Google how to curtsy? No, we were in the car. Okay. <laughs> we were in the car for five minutes How does arriving. one curtsy? Yes. Deeply um, to show respect. Uh -huh. And I learned it very quickly um, right in front of the house. We just practiced and then walked in. And you and Harry practiced. Yeah, and Fergie ran out, and she said, are you ready? Do you know how to curtsy? I said, oh my goodness, you guys. Before Meghan Markle becomes Prince Harry's bride, she came to this tea house in Pasadena, California, to learn proper tea etiquette. Edmund Fry, owner of the Rose Tea Cottage, was tasked with teaching Meghan proper protocol. He says Meghan visited nine months ago. Her friends made the reservation. Hello, beautiful people. I will be doing a full review either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I'm reading the book. I didn't buy it, so I will send it to some of my members whose uh, um, WhatsApp number I have, so they can read it too. Um, the assignment was simple for Harry. Show up and smile. Be grateful for the position you were born into, because only a handful of people are born into that kind of position in the world. Uh, and find yourself a nice woman, a woman of principles, a woman of values, a woman who cherishes family, a woman <laughs> who would make you happy. That was his remit. That was his, his assignment. But I guess he didn't understand the assignment. Because of his love of Africa, the queen created the Queen's Commonwealth Trust in April 2018, and, and she made Harry president and Meghan Markle vice president with the goal, because the queen knew that he didn't want to stay in the United Kingdom, so she said, I know you love Africa. In fact, there's many interviews where he said that he would like to go to Africa. So the queen started creating the path for him to go there in a very high, high capacity representing the entire common, Queen's Commonwealth, which was the most cherished uh, organization for the Queen. That was her jewel in her crown. But I guess he didn't understand the assignment. On this note, beautiful people, please stay and watch the whole video. Why is it that it's up to us YouTubers to do the job of these journalists, of these royal experts? Why don't they do investigative journalism? How can a YouTuber like me know and have three sources and the, and the security company that, that protects Megan and the three contacts I have have told me that she's sleeping with the bodyguard? How can I, a YouTuber with less than 100,000 people, subscribers, know or was told by a very reliable source that after that, car chase, uh, Harry left and he was, he got out of the car with a bodyguard and didn't see Megan and that a family friend ended up picking him up and helping him get out of New York. How come I have that info, but royal reporters don't? Why is it that we, why is it that all royal reporters are pretending that it's Omid who wrote that book when everybody knows that's Megan. Why is it that a YouTuber like me knows that Omid has in his phone number, in his phone, 416 number. That's, and I don't know if you know this, but if you're Canadian, you would know that's the Toronto area code. How come people, how come I know that? And these royal reporters don't know that Omid is communicating with Megan and Harry. They haven't denounced the book, have they? Because if they do, they know that Omid has enough receipts to call them out. But they can't endorse it, but they're not going to denounce it because they're screwed either way. Because if they denounce Omid, Omid's going to say, what? Because Marcus Anderson, and the reason why you've seen Meghan Markle with Marcus Anderson a lot is because Marcus and Meghan have met, and Harry in two occasions have met with Omid Scobie because Omid Scobie flew to California 
and he went to the polo club. He took pictures of himself at the polo club lounge with Marcus and Megan. Well, Megan wasn't in the picture and neither was Marcus, but he was at the polo lounge because he met with Harry and Megan and Marcus. So how come a YouTuber like me have more ovaries than those men? And I can flatly say that we all know in this little YouTube channel, our little community, none of us are going to pretend that this is Omid Scobie's book. Because we just saw, I just saw Pierce Morgan with that Tessa Dunlop, that child abuser, um, talk that is Omid Scobie's fault. Yeah, they're trying to blame it all on Sco Omid Scobie. Just follow the money trail, see who shares that money, who he will share that money with. <laughs> and, and then you'll come across, but they don't want to do that work. They look at YouTubers like us who do all the work for them. And then, oh, they breaking news, breaking news. I mean, it's insane. It really is insane, guys. So watch the video because I have quite a few things and I don't understand why these amazing, um, amazing royal reporters are not doing their jobs. They just come to our channels, look at our channels and they re-report the news. And because they're saying it after we say it, oh, it's credible. So I have a lot to talk about um, and, uh, and let me know what you think because what I'm about to talk is actually quite interesting and it has to do a little bit with the book, but I'm not going to do the review today because I want to do it properly because if Omid Scobie or Meghan Markle, that's completely Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle resorted to name calling Catherine in the book because no author would use a book to name call another person because that's just bitchy especially from a man that's misogynistic but we saw harry name call many women belittle women humiliate women in that misogynistic book that he called despair so if an author of a book resorts to name calling a mother because he's belittling the job of Catherine as a mother. That, it's for one reason, because Megan doesn't understand what being a mother is, because she's not a mother. If she were a mother, she would know what a lot of work that is. And if you really valued and prioritized your children, like she said on that phony stage for that mental health with Carson Daly, she would have, she would not be flying around. Those kids have not seen Harry nor Megan. In the past two and a half months, they have been, they've been in like 47, days away from the children and the remainder that we know of. So of course, Meghan Markle doesn't understand that being a mother is full time, being a full time, um, you know, a working mom is, it's hard because she's not one. She's not one. So of course she doesn't understand. Of course she's going to attack Catherine that has three children and she is a proper mother. She loves her children. And on top of that, she's doing full time charity work, not part time. She, she actually works behind the scenes. You know, she just doesn't show up like Harry and Meghan. She actually does the work, gets to know the people, goes to the communities. And then of course she, in order to draw attention and raise funds, she does the public appearances as well. At the same time, she's a mom of three children. So of course they would, Harry and Meghan, especially Harry doesn't understand because, and Meghan doesn't understand because her mother figure, it's Doria. And the father figure that did the job of mother and father, she trashed it and threw it away. So her mother example is not good. And her father example, which was good, she cast it away. So let's get a little bit into what's going on with this race thing and, and a couple of things too. And you know why it makes me so upset, but I'm going to give it, I, I'm going to give it where I say I'm going to give it. Charles, whatever his failings may be, being a father, a good father to Harry was not one of them because even Princess Diana said that Charles was a good father. So, I mean, let's get into the video. I'm sorry for the long intro. <laughs> you know what's so upsetting? Is that actually Charles was a decent father who loved Harry. Clearly he did. Do all parents make mistakes? Absolutely. Was he a crappy husband? Absolutely. But he did, he did provide Harry with love, care, lots of hugs, lots of fun. And he was proud of the fake soldier he became. And what does Harry do? He trashes his father. 
In his book, he talks about killing his own father. That's who Harry is. And I don't understand people don't understand that because it's very obvious to me. But again, you know, anybody who sees this, it's, it's incredible to me that they don't get it. Charles was not an absent father, but he was a working father, a working single father. Well, Camilla was there. But now we have Charles who has given Harry lots of money. They had an agreement that he was not to accuse. And this is important because it's part of the book. He was not to falsely accuse an employee in a court case after the poor employee went through the trauma of being investigated and cleared. Did he listen? No, but he still wanted the money. Because of course, this is a man who whatever Harry wants, Harry got. The, it wasn't a hard thing. He had a grandmother who was the queen of England, who adored him and a grandfather who adored him as well. All he had to do was love them back, respect them, and live by the principles that he was taught as a child, a young adult, and as an adult. It's a grandmother that absolutely adored him. And clearly, he got the best because, you know, this is the Queen of England. He got the best guidance and the most love that this lady could give. And her and his grandpa as well. Catherine, Princess Catherine, Prince William, but mostly Catherine. And this is what Meghan hates about Catherine and William. But mostly Catherine, he, she really wants to destroy this woman because Catherine represents everything that she will never be. Catherine is a lady of principles, family values, love, decency, hardworking, unpretentious, not a, a whore, you know, like a fame seeking whore. Catherine is a lady who loves, who cares for others, and who cares for her husband, her husband's family, and who's loyal to a fault. And that's what Meghan couldn't stand, the relationship between Harry and Catherine. Because if you look at everything that Meghan has managed to do, is destroy everything around her. This is not Omid who wrote this book. I will disagree Pierce with Piers Morgan and Tessa. Oh yeah, it was Omid who did that, no. This is Rachel Megan Raglan because she does not deserve the last name Markle because the Markle family are not guilty of what a desperate, degenerate, um, dumbass Megan Markle is. This is what she envies the most. The fact that she doesn't have any values. She has to trash everybody around her who doesn't have the, or doesn't share the lack of morals that she has. It is actually quite disgusting. Harry had the world at his fingertips and he threw it all away. And all for what? For a fame hoe who's absolutely worth nothing? This is a woman who doesn't even know what, how to be a mother. Because in order for her to be a mother, she would actually need to have given birth to these two children. But she doesn't. I don't, it's my personal opinion that she never, didn't give birth to these children. But even if she didn't, because there are other, men, other ladies who, who have, you know, who are mothers through surrogates. But Megan, Megan is all about Megan. So why are people not calling her out? Why are these royal reporters not calling her out? Why are they just standing there looking like idiots? Oh, it's Megan. It, why aren't they doing that? We have a woman with a husband who gave her the platform of his family, trashing the family, everything, everything he had, he's thrown away for a D-list, dumbass, desperate, degenerate woman who mocks everything because she doesn't care about anything. She looks like an overweight, or no, no, she looks like a orange, ugly looking Teletubby. And this is the happiness that Harry sought. This is your, in the, in the assignment he didn't get. A stalker with no morals. 
according to Harry and Rachel Megan Raglan, they were accusing two members of the royal family of such heinous racism and bullying and mental abuse that they had to leave the continent. They had to leave their jobs, all their privileges, and go to another continent. I've talked about this before, but hopefully we will go over it again. This was back in 2011, when people actually were, were held accountable for their, there were consequences. There used to be consequences to actions. If you behave badly, you were punished. Men jailed over false racial abuse claims. Yeah, falsely using. I've talked about this case. It's actually a crime in the United Kingdom to falsely abuse their race card. And also, it is a crime to racially abuse somebody, you know, to the point of causing harm, financial, mental, or emotional. So there are procedures for this. And this is why I want you to focus on a little bit, okay? If somebody accuses you of racially abusing them, the police comes, puts you in jail, they usually suspend you for your job, and then there's an investigation. If you're, clear back, if you're cleared, then you go back to your work. But of course, before that happens, in my opinion, it should be the other way around. But because it's a racially charge, uh, it's a racial charge, a racial abuse charge. They jump the gun first, and then afterwards they investigate. They take the word of the person who's racially, who claims to have been racially abused, right? This is in 2011. A sales rep was jailed for 12 months today for playing the race card by falsely claiming a traffic warden had racially abused him and attacked him to avoid paying for a parking ticket. So Meghan Markle, this is my opinion, Meghan Markle has accused everybody of racism in order not to be called out for her bullying, her lies. Oh, you're, you know, Megan, Mar we know that you didn't go, you don't, you don't speak Spanish. Oh, you're being racist. Megan, we know you didn't work at the Argentina, at the U.S. Embassy in Argentina. You're being racist. Megan, we know that you didn't study, you didn't get two majors. Oh, you're being racist. Megan, we know you're lying about your father. Oh, you're being racist. That's using their race card. When you call somebody out on their behavior, actions, or words, and they use their race card to get out of the punishment that they so deserve. Ben Halal was also convicted of making another false allegation of racial abuse against a consultant doctor after he confronted the defendant for parking in a disabled bay outside a hospital. Halal from Farham, Hampshire, was found guilty of two charges of preventing the course of public justice and was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment for both offenses to run concurrently. The second charge against Halal, a father of three, involved him making another false allegation that a consultant doctor had also racially abused him outside a hospital. The court heard that Dr. Neil Buchanan had approached Halal when he had parked in a disabled bay without a blue badge outside the Royal Hampshire County Hospital in Winchester. Halal went on to falsely accuse Dr. Buchanan of racially assaulting him, leading to him also being arrested and questioned by the police. His estranged wife, Diane Bateman, 52 from Gosport, was found guilty of one offense of perverting the course of justice after the jury found her guilty by providing a statement in support of Halal. Bateman, a caterer for an old people's home, was given a six-month prison sentence suspended for 12 months, 100 hours community service, and ordered to pay 500 pounds cost. Sentencing Halal at Portsmouth Crown Court, Judge Roger Hetherington said, this was a concerted and determined tactic employed by you on two separate occasions and pursued to the bitter end to make a deliberately false allegation against two holy innocent men. Your motivation was partly self-interest to get yourself out of a situation where you were clear, clearly wrong and partly in anger that anyone should have the temerity to challenge you. You have deliberately played the race card knowing it would cause maximum embarrassment to those on the receiving end and would be treated seriously by the authorities. The seriousness of these offenses lies not just in the distress and anxiety felt by the victims, but also in the fact it strikes at the root of public justice and undermines people's confidence in the system. The trial heard that in the incident 
which happened in November 2009, Halal had parked on double yellow lines outside a supermarket in Farham when he was approached by Andrew Lynch, a civic enforcement officer, its CEO, okay, not, not, chief, not, 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 not chief executive officer from the local council. Mr. Lynch warned the 45-year-old who was sitting in the gray Volvo car that he was parked illegally and would issue him with a parking ticket if he did not move on. But by the time he, he returned to the vehicle, Halal, who is originally from Tunisia, had claimed to another um, CEO that he had been racially abused and assaulted by Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch was later arrested and interrogated by police for three hours about the alleged incident and suspended from his job at, at, Bar at Farham Borough Council while the case was investigated. He was only allowed back to work more than five weeks later, after the police decided there was no case to answer. Luisa Bagley, prosecuting, said he, Mr. Lynch, was an innocent man, a traffic warden, and you may have your own views about those who issue parking tickets. Mr. Halal wanted to get around having to pay for that penalty ticket and hence made this allegation in order to avoid paying for that ticket. Mr. Lynch told the court during the trial I went up to the vehicle and said to the driver that he needed to move. At this point, he said to me that he was on the phone to the police and that I had assaulted him. He said that I had grabbed him around the face and had hit him against his headrest. I said, no, I haven't. I stepped back and went to issue a penalty charge notice. Mr. Lynch added, I was suspended from patrolling, from doing my job. I thought I was going to lose my job. Inspector Diengauer of Hampshire Police said after the hearing, what Mr. Halal did was despicable, and I hope he will reflect on the damage he did and the upset he caused to Mr. Lynch and Dr. Buchanan. I know what you're thinking. Why did I talk about that? Because for some reason, all these royal reporters are still talking about who the royal racist is, those two people, which it never happened. The person who was wondering what the color of the skin of the kid would be was Harry. And this is why I posted that thing about Stephen Colbert. But is, are the royal reporters picking on that? And let me tell you, I tagged Angela Levin, I tagged uh, Daily Mail, I tagged everybody and the X account that I put that because I posted the little tidbit there on Twitter or, or on X. So they get those news, you know, but do they report on that? No, they don't pick on that. Instead, instead they run with that. We have Pierce Morgan and everybody talking about the royal races and nobody's talking about what Harry said about Stephen Colbert. He does, they don't. They're all standing there. Well, wait a minute. Harry said that at the very beginning, before he even knew if the relationship was going to go the distance, he was wondering if his genes were going to be able to stand against Meghan's genes. He was the one wondering, worried, concerned that the kid might get some of those black genes. And yet, no royal reporter is talking about this. Why did I talk about that case? And I've talked about it many, many times. Because it is a crime to falsely use their race card. Meghan Markle is using their race card to get out of being called out for all the lies, all the bullying, all the slander, all the perjury. People are walking on eggshells, oh, because you're being racist. Instead of investigating, and they don't care about the damage that they're doing to Catherine, the mental, emotional, and physical toll is going to take on her and the rest of the royal family. And the fact that a man goes and feels to put in a book, well, it's not Omid, Megan through Omid, but he still is his name, puts in a book, name calling a woman for, doing, for being a mother, doing her job, and not allowing her to be bullied by Meghan Markle. It's incredible because even Tom Bauer didn't name call anybody. So why are the royal reporters not talking about this? Why are they all quiet about it? I am just a YouTuber with less than 100,000 subscribers and I can still do a better job than they can and they have a lot of resources. A lot of these royal reporters or reporters work and they get paid to do these things. We don't. We don't. So why aren't they talking about this? And I urge you, please, to go to X if you have X account 
and tag Angela Levin on my account and tell her, why don't you say, why don't you report on Harry saying that he was concerned about the genes, that his genes were going to be strong enough to defeat Meghan Markle's genes because he didn't want those genes to come out there and play. And, you know, it, it's unbelievable. Why aren't they calling for a full-blown investigation? Because if we go by the letter of the law, those two royal racists, there has to be a full investigation because it is a hate crime. So there has to be a full, I've been talking about this for a long time, there has to be a full investigation. They have to detain these two royals, get to the bottom of it, and then decide whether or not there's a jail sentence to be had. Meghan Markle, as I said, has been allowed to get away with bullying, abuse, slander, perjury, fraud. And this won't stop until they stop because finding freedom and as I said to you before abuse only escalates finding freedom was just the first shot ah, it went, you know it's like when somebody starts to hit you they they start pushing you or being verbally abusive and then it can escalate to physical abuse but they start small finding freedom oh they got away with it Megan committed perjury what were the ramifications none that gave her an incentive to continue because that's, what, that's how bullies, narcissistic bullies see it. They see quiet as an incentive. So they go and do the Netflix. What happened? Nothing. Then they do then do the spare. And then they go get uh, um, a prize for fighting um, racial institution, racial, uh, the institution. They fight that according to the lady from the Robert F. Kennedy, that Meghan and Harry went up to the institution to tell them how to do their job, and they stood up to them, and they're fighting institutional racism. They, got a, they went and got an award for that. And then Harry goes on Tom Bradley saying that that's not the case, and shouldn't they, get, shouldn't they give that award back? I mean, it's just me talking shit here. And then... We have the podcast, we have all these little things, all these little articles, because we know Megan pays for, for bulk of articles. But nothing, they haven't been stopped. They haven't been stopped properly. So now we have a full-blown absolute Z list because the, the reason why Omid Scobie became a royal reporter was because Megan grabbed him and started giving her, him royal um, the news for royal engagements for him to appear there in exchange for him writing the Finding Freedom book and putting out the nastiness that she wanted him to put out. Why aren't anybody questioning that Omid is, is still talking to Meghan Markle? Why are these royal reporters pretending that it was Omid who wrote that book? Please, somebody answer that. And I'll see you, I'll do the video for their, for their review because it's boring. The book is boring. The book is very, very boring. What basically what's out there, the things that you see, it's basically what's there. The book is very boring. It's repetitive. It's everything that's been out there already. He just exaggerated. Next year, he's going to write another book where it says, is there 10 royal racists? <laughs> I mean, please leave me your comments.